Welcome to Jewish Cinematheque, where we meet some of the important faces involved with films that tackle aspects of the Jewish experience. Today I'm joined by Meir Gerner, the lead actor in the Israeli film Africa, written and directed by his son, Oren. The film is a study of a 68-year-old retiree struggling with his mortality and his changing status within a very close-knit society. Oren Gerner's Africa is not your ordinary movie. It's a narrative film, not just about his father, it's also about his mother, his family, his community, a Moshav-like town where locals sing in a makela, in a choir, go Israeli folk dancing weekly, and where youth gather around a campfire. Couldn't be any better. In many ways, it's a striking snapshot of what we might have perceived as an ideal Israeli society with its bumps. מאיה ואני רוצים לברך אותך. זה נשמע, זה לא ברכה אלקטרונית, אז חופשי כזה. תן, איחו לחבר כאילו. אוקיי. זאביק, וואלה, אתה כבר בן 60. אני לא מאמין, קשה לי להאמין. אבל אני אומר לך, זה הגיל הכי טוב, זה הגיל שממנו אפשר להתחיל, אין לך שום מחויבויות. ילדים נשואים כבר, יש נכדים, אתה יכול לעשות מה בראש שלך. נסענו לקירגיסטן ביחד, זה רק דוגמה, אפשר לעשות עוד מיליון ואחד דברים. לא חייב לעשות איתי. שנייה. מה אימא? היי מאיר, מה נשמע? תגיד לי, שמעת משהו על הישיבת הקמה? אה, החלטנו להוריד את זה ממך. החליטו להעביר את זה לנוער. מי קיבל את ההחלטה הטיפשית הזאת? הגול הזה כבר חמור גדול, הם פשוט מרים אותו. הוא כבר לא נכנס במיטה שלו, עכשיו אנחנו צריכים לקנות לו מיטה חדשה באיקאה. למה לקנות? אני יכול לעשות. לא צריך, אבל. אני רוצה לחתוך שתעזור לי פה במשהו. זה דחוף לך זה? שום דבר לא דחוף, אבל אם אתה יכול, בוא שנייה. עזוב את הטלפון עכשיו, אורן. ממי, מה קורה? לא קורה כלום. דבר איתי. חבל לי שאתה לא משתף אותי, ברור לי שעובר עליך משהו. What's particularly interesting is that Gerner chose to have both of his parents play the lead roles in this motion picture. Meir, welcome to Jewish Cinematheque. Thank you. Thank so you how did this whole project evolve? How, you know, I mean, it's, it's clearly about you. You are the star. You've, I take it, have never been in a movie before. How well, did it begin? Uh, uh, not, not, not as a full, uh, uh, long movie, but, uh, you know, in some uh, series for some periods, but uh, not, not as a main actor ever. But as it started, it, uh, everything is uh, the idea of Oren. Actually, when he started, he didn't think about us. He thought about completely different place, and, uh, but he had experience with us because he made uh, a short film with us, so he knew uh, that we will be... Um, he knew we could count on you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we will be fully devoted to his uh, wills and... Uh, um, so short, uh, slowly, but, but, but he decided later on that because of the expenses that the movie may take, and the environment uh, that can support him. Uh, he should try and see maybe we can do something in our place so he wouldn't have to go to a lot where he thought at uh, the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> and he had some experience with us, so he uh, 
in a way decided to uh, a little bit change the the idea but the the major idea of having someone uh, uh, aging um, was still in his mind so he uh, aging tried... but but a full mind but the yes. body the body was starting to, uh, to... I don't uh, this is something I believe that was developed also during his uh, writing but uh, I think that he had the idea in his mind uh, what, what should be done and uh, he started actually taking um, um, some takes uh, with a regular uh, camera and with a regular cell phone with a regular cell phone <clears throat> but with but with the, the the guy that was responsible for uh, all the picture the, the, the cinematography the, the cinematography and he went through all the uh, all all the things that he wanted, and even he signed on the floors wherever he wanted uh, to have the, the the pictures taken from. And he saw that I believe he saw that it is something that may uh, hold water. As you I call can it. I can count on Abba. I can count on Ima. That, that's I think that he knew already. He knew that. Um, and at the mo at a certain moment, they decided, you know, they made all the calculations, how much it should cost, you know, and uh, all the support that we could, could give him both for him and for the whole team in our house, because it became like, this was the facility where everything happened. So uh, all the, the uh, lunches, dinners, uh, food, everything was in our house. Uh, so it was easy for him, and I think it was okay, you know, he had... Most of his team uh, was, uh, uh, he selected the, the, the team of taking the pictures, you know, the sound man, the, the crew, everything, you know, the people that he knew. And uh, he also discussed with them how much it should, he can pay them. And, uh, and they agreed uh, to be paid after, if it is a successful one and whatever he's going to get then they will get the shares that they, they, they deserve. And all of them agreed there. There was nobody that said, okay, I'm not. Uh... And all, all of them were professionals. I mean, young, young people, but really professionals. So, uh... Well, it's very clear in the film. The film is a beautifully uh, photographed movie, and, and everything is quite professional, including the non-professional act, two act, main lead actors. How okay. was it for you, first of all, acting in a feature film. You had done little stints in the short, but for you acting in a feature film and um, for you to be directed by your son. Okay. He's it's calling it's, the shots, not you. Yeah, I know. It's kind of interesting because usually along the years, I used to tell him what to do. Now all of a sudden <laughs> right. he comes and tells me, you know, do that. No, don't, don't do that. And, and so on. Uh, but me and I think also Maya, my wife, we try to be as close to his uh, direct directions as possible. Uh, and <laughs> who knows him, you know, he's a very professionist. So if there is a take after two, three times, they said it was wonderful. You know that there are seven more coming. So unless uh, and, and, until they, that he is satisfied, not that it is completely as he wanted, but he wanted during the, the edition uh, time to be able to use different uh, scenes from different places and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, for me, it was, I tried to be as much as close to what, what he had in mind. By the way, he didn't even tell me what the film is all about. I had to find it myself, what, what he, you know, the, the fact that a young guy has in mind and he can uh, imagine the, the spirit of an old man, uh, that it is not that he is uh, denied for, from different things, but he's completely uh, uh, not becoming not, not relevant, like air, like like, you know, nobody really uh, think about him. It's not the denial, it is more the... the uh, you mean the aging the, process when somebody gets older, suddenly they sort of drift away and they're not as essential. 
Not, uh, not, not only essential, it, you know, during lifetime, I got some people sometimes uh, denied from different things, work or even sometimes family and sometimes friends. But Purely here, because of your age? No, no, I mean, I mean, during lifetime. Uh, like, it, okay. it is, this is something that is uh, very natural, but right. the fact that now all of a sudden it's not, it's, it's, it's the, the, um, the fact that nobody really think about you, it's like you are completely uh, transparent. It's not somebody said oh, no, they, they just don't, they don't say anything, which is more, I think, uh, 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 it is more painful than than just you know discuss with somebody and he says no and you said yes and it's just. Did you share this with Oren? I mean, was he, he he's not living in your home? He's he's got his own mm, home with the that, kids. That's right. But he comes to visit. <clears throat> so did he? Did, I mean, he built that story in large part around you. You yes. had been retired what for five years? Uh, at that time, uh, I think a, a little bit less, but. But yes, and, and and there you were working in the you know outside in the Nagaria, you know, the, doing your uh, yeah. your carpentry. Yes. Uh, did he sense that? Did you share that with him, or he just sort of he, picked this up? I think I I picked it up. I mean, I mean, I understood what he wants, and he didn't tell me anything. He just said, "Play naturally." You know, what do you think? Go ahead. We'll see if it works out or not. So this, you live in Nirit which uh, in the film, it's celebrating its 40th anniversary of creation. I take it it happened right after the Six Day War? Or right no, at, no, 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 much later. Much later, but I mean it's it- just now, I believe in about a year, they will really set, celebrate the 40 years. I see. They were, the, there were the 30 years, and he played it as if it is 40. And it's, how did you find yourself in Nirit? I mean, what drew you there? Yeah. Uh, we were uh, living in, in the city, in Petah Tikva and uh, Ramat Gan, give a time. And, but we always knew, my, my wife and myself, uh, we always knew that we will move to a, another place where the community will be a little uh, uh, smaller, where we can um, have our own house with our small garden. And uh, you know, it's kind of, and we, we were one of the first ones in in Nirid, like uh, about 35 years ago, and the community was very nice. People were coming from different uh, places, not religious, religious, you know, Mizrahim or Sephardim or no, all of them together, and it was great. I mean, it was really very nice, and then it grew slowly, but still, it's a, it's a small community. It's not such a large community. What we see in the film, which is really quite special, is Everyone seems to know everyone else's name. Yes, uh, because we are not that big. Well, what, you have what, about eight, nine hundred people? <clears throat> uh, families, I think we have like three hundred. Okay, and individuals? No, they're not going to double it. Okay. Uh, and uh, you, you know, so you were involved in, in the uh, in the in building the stage for the for the celebrations. Your wife is in the choir. Uh, your friends are Israeli folk dancing. Um, so everyone seems to, yeah, and, and the kids are, you know, well, at, at the, the Medura, at now, the campfire. Now, now you have to differentiate between, between the, the fiction. reality and the fiction. Okay, so tell me about the reality. <laughs> reality is the infrastructure. The infrastructure is there. I mean, Israel, uh, Nirit, the uh, house, and even my bedroom. Everything is, <laughs> is real. Uh, my wife is a psychologist, and she's uh, also singing in the choir. Um, myself, I am a high-tech engineer. I'm not coming at all from uh, from that that side of uh, carpenter and so on. But I was volunteering in different places. Uh, but you were retired as a high-tech engineer. I, I after the, the movie is taken after I think like two three years after I retired from the high-tech uh, uh, field. And uh, but my hobby is is the carpentry. So it worked everything around uh, around this uh, stuff, and uh, and and that's it. This is this is the way how we got there, and we are very happy uh, with you know the living there. It's a nice, very nice, good uh, place. So Nirit is in a very interesting place geographically in Israel. It's not that far from Ramla, 
Uh, it's not that far from Ranana. Well, in, in broad strokes. N not Ramla. Not Ramla? No. Well, but it's, it's near what but, was the pre-67 border, no? Yes, yes, yeah. it is what is okay. called uh, the Green Line. The Green Line. We, is it over the Green Line or no, right on the no. edge of the Green Line? Most of it is within, and uh, there is a very small uh, portion that was built uh, outside of, uh, of the Green Line. So side. there's a scene right. where you and your neighbor are doing your patrol. Yes. Uh, and even stopping at a fence and you're looking out, who's there? You hear noises. Mm, yeah, that's right. uh, is that a concern for you today? Not at all. And during the problems recently that took place within mm, Israel of never Israeli had, Arabs, uh, never no, had any problems? Never had any problem with that. Um, no. Everything, everybody there was a little, well, were, I mean, we, we have few um, Arab uh, villages very near to us and we are living in peace everything you know we buy at their places and uh, some of them work in our place we used to have in the first years uh, they used to come and uh, steal some cars but uh, after we had the fence it completely stopped so the film is called Africa yes and at various points you begin the film you're on your trip to Africa um, and why do you think, and again, maybe it's not fair to ask you the question, this was Oren's choice, but why did Oren sort of integrate some of the footage from your trip to Africa into the film? Any thoughts or? Uh, I, can, I can tell you what he told me. I mean, Please. For me, it is, uh, uh, he, looked at, he looked at our movie that we made uh, when we were at in a trip to, uh, to Namibia. And he saw the, um, the real natural life that has not gone yet to modernization. And he thought it's like something that is raw and it is something that contradicts what are the feelings of me in this, in the, in the, in this reality, and he said, "This is something that uh, he 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 envisioned as if it is something that I would like to uh, to go there, to be there, to be free, to be uh, to to live in in this kind of of wilderness, and not not in 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 the places where I am completely ignorant." So this was his kind of, uh, uh, of thought. You grew up in a generation where you did go Israeli folk dancing, uh, where you went to Shirab at Seaboard to, uh, to singing, you know, as a group. Um, it's not that way anymore, is it? So do you think Oren made it, or, or maybe it is in Nirit? Uh, you said it's, it, there's fiction and there's truth in Nirit. Well, okay, let me a little bit uh, uh, stress that because the, the fiction is, is the way that he made me in the movie because I'm completely different. I mean, in real life... <laughs> you're not depressed. Your, body, not, is, not your depressed. body is, is I, strong. I think and... there is not one day that I wake up in the morning and I don't know what, what, I, what would I do today. So uh, most of it used to be like, uh, as I said, volunteering in different uh, high schools, teaching mathematics to uh, Muslims, uh, uh, Jewish and uh, different places, different people, that, uh, pupils that came from different places. <clears throat> and, uh, and then I have, we have our boat and we go and cruise sometimes. I'm fed up with it, so I'm, I'm going to sell it probably. But uh, still with the, with the carpentry, it also it is very nice and I have some friends that w we work together. And every time, once in, once in a while, I buy to my, my wife a, a, new, a new saw table or uh, a new jigsaw or something. <laughs> some stuff. Your wife buys for you? No, I buy for her. It's, uh, I'm jo it's, I'm oh, joking. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. And yes. yeah, I bought you a new saw. But you know, in the film, what's what's special, and I, I must tell you, I was very jealous. You uh, you made a, a bed for your grandson. Was that, that actually something right. that you did in real in real life? Actually, 
I built for that movie two beds. One of them to be at the end to have a, a, a bed, a real bed, and the other one was for the process. You know, I'm like how we work about on, on it. So there were two beds, but none of them was kept. I mean, they. Will, they didn't use them. They didn't use them. Oh, I, I, no, they didn't great use them. beds. <laughs> they didn't use them, no. <laughs> um, in the film, your wife plays herself. She is a psychologist. Mm -hmm. She's having sessions in the home. She used to, yes. She used to, okay. Uh, it's, but I guess Oren decided to use that in the film because it's actually very cute because at a certain point, you're sort of sitting by the door. This was something my wife didn't like. Because, <laughs> Tell you know, me why. You, at first, he, he had in mind, and this was in his script, that I should get inside during one of the her sessions and say, where are my uh, wood, uh, that are all your... Uh, Which is what? in the film. Yes, but, but she said, listen, this is not reality. Never, never it will happen that during a, a psychology session, somebody will just drop you know, in, get, get into the, in, in the, the room. So the compromise was that I will make some noise outside and wait until, uh, until the session is done. She didn't, later on, only after the movie was, there, was, was uh, uh, screened, she noticed that I was like listening to another session. They said it was also not good. I mean, this, this is one of the points where we had uh, kind of, uh, Conflicts with Oren. This is one of them, and the other one was when in the carpentry he said, "You have to hold this wood like that," and I said, "No, you don't do it. You know, you have to put it and do it like that. You cannot do it like that." This is one of them, and that one was also in the electricity to have to switch on the fuses or off. He said, "Open and close." I said, "No, you don't. Do, you don't say open and close. You have switch on, switch on, switch off." So we had only these kind of technical issues that we had some conflicts with his ideas, how to make the But the, in the end, it was not the dad who made the final decision. Yes, he, he made and, his decision. And those two scenes are, are in the film. Uh, yeah, a little, yeah, but a little bit uh, uh, where they were... You compromised. Com yeah, a little bit. Because he said, okay, don't, <laughs> don't cut it like that, but just draw something on it. I said, okay. okay. Another point, just please. Another point was, you know, there is one of the one of the the the, the, the scenes that was really, I think, a kind of a climax. Where was when I was screaming with the dog, and then the scream came out of me, and it was very hard for me. And the movie was taken twice. You know, we had some things, and then uh, okay, let's. I had to grow a bird again. It was about a year after. And he said, we have to do this screen because it was not good. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. He said, no, you are. I said, no, I cannot. First of all, if I do, all the, our neighbors will come out and check what, what's going on. So we went out, outside in one of the small uh, um, forests we have like there. And he brought some uh, towels. And he said, I, I uh, pull it, you pull it, and you have to scream and pull it. And then the sound man was... Was, and he captured uh, it and then he uh, used that. Uh, yes. Fantastic. And it was, um, uh, for me, it was very, very hard. I mean, I said, I'm not going to do that anymore. Said, Are no, you going to act in another film if somebody were to approach you? Would you do it? No, if it is not him, I don't think so. I, I used to, as I said, a little bit in one of the series, there was Miluim. If you remember, there was a kind of a series, Miluim, where I was playing. As Reserve a, duty. Yes. This was the movie. This was the series. Uh, and I was playing there as a, as a doctor. It was, it was something more. And I also was in a five-year um, kind of a, a club, theater club in our community. And then we also raised a, a kind of a theater play where I was playing as a, as a homosexual dresser. Dresser, you know, the... the so I had some small experiences, but it was for my, it was fun for me. And the, the, this movie is also fun for me. So I, if there is somebody else that will ask, I'll have to consider it because- To make is, sure that the pay is right. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> talking about pay. I will always volunteer for these type of uh, things. 
in the high tech, I would go for <laughs> for other stuff. But so you have a son who has made this, and by the way, it's cute. Oren is actually has a cameo in the film. He's he's also in the film. Yeah, uh, as is uh, your grandson. And um, but filmmaking is is tough. You just earlier you mentioned Oren had to keep the budget low because there's limited mm -hmm. amount of funding, even though there was some money from the Rabinovich uh, fund. Uh, so. How do you feel about having a son who's chosen to be a filmmaker? Listen, I, he is, I think he's a genius. Like not only as a filmmaker, also from the business point of view, he actually started uh, a special uh, uh, internet, uh, in, I think, I think it, it, it's a um, blog, something, it's called Indi indie, independent filmmakers, mm -hmm. because he went through these uh, problems and he, he understood all of them. And now he has a special uh, website and, and giving he, advice, giving advice to other filmmakers. Yes, it's open to a lot of other people. And I think that he wants to go not only in Israel to go over the, uh, all over the world with that, because he understood that there, are, there is a real problem of, of a lot of people that started learning, studying uh, uh, movie makers and uh, they, they couldn't, they don't know how to, to proceed with it. And, uh, and I think he's very successful with that. He is very appreciated, I think. And I believe he will succeed uh, because he, he, first of all, is not depending only on one movie that he did or two. He's actually teaching now, he's a professor of, in the same school that he was taught. And the name he, of the school is? Uh, Minshar. Which is in Tel Aviv? It is in Tel Aviv, and, and not only there, also in Jerusalem there is another one, Male, it is called Male. Sure. And, <clears throat> and sometimes he also give, is giving also lectures in other schools as well. So this is a very special treat. When Meir talks about this being a family affair, uh, there's Meir, his wife Maya, uh, his son Oren, who is not only the filmmaker, but also acts in the film. And we have a special guest. We have Gilad joining us, who's also uh, an actor in the film. Gilad, how was it to, uh, to be with your, your grandfather and with your uh, grandmother and your father in this film? Uh, it was really fun. It's, I think it's better when you do it with your family, because you know who, with who you do the films, and it was really fun and have a, and to have a, a lot of action with your family because you don't realize that you, you do it with your brother and your mother and your grandpa. Uh, yeah, it was really, really fun. Wonderful. Do you yourself think you want to be a filmmaker too? Uh, maybe. Terrific. Well, Gilad, thank you for joining us. Meir, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, I wish you much success with the film Africa. It is a film by Oren Gerner and stars the entire family. It's, it's incredible. Oren takes his family story and he uses family to tell it. Exceptional. So keep your eyes out open, uh, keep your eyes open for Africa and thank you for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. It was a pleasure. For me too. Thank okay. you very much. And Gilad, thank you for joining us at the end. Thank you too.